Now, if you are watching the football this Saturday, you might spot some of these white ribbons. Uh, this weekend marks White Ribbon Day. It's a campaign to end violence against women and girls, something that our reporter Eleanor Roper is here to tell us a little bit more about. Eleanor. Yeah, it's something that Sky Sports Football is getting behind. So as you say, you might see some of your favourite pundits wearing a white ribbon uh, this weekend. Now, White Ribbon UK is a charity which works to engage men and boys to help end violence against women and girls. Their work looks to tackle the root causes of violence. So they try and target attitudes and behaviours which they think bring about inequality, things that are more subtle than violence. But the idea is, Joe, to try and stop it before it starts. Now, we're going to start by hearing from Emma, who's been telling us about the abuse that she experienced from her ex-partner. And just a warning that this, if this is something that you've been affected by, you might find Emma's story upsetting. Here she is with her experience. For me, being a survivor, um, I have been subjected to financial abuse, emotional abuse, physical, sexual, and also coercive controlling behaviour. Um, and for me, the most powerful part was the coercive controlling behaviour. So my ex would use threats of suicide um, and he would threaten to harm himself if I tried to leave the relationship. And for me, that was the reason that I stayed for so long. So I stayed in the relationship for five years. Um, and there was some attempts that he made that were real. And then there was attempts that he made that were fake, were basically just to scare me and to frighten me and to make me return to the relationship after his behaviour. Um, and on the last occasion when I did leave him, he was arrested for and charged with domestic abuse, um, but I was too afraid to press charges. So I dropped the charges against him and he hung himself from the shower in our flat. Now, the message from White Ribbon is that small actions can make a big change. They're urging all of us to remember the phase, I'm not OK with that. So to challenge assumptions, to have conversations with friends. And we can hear now from Anthea Sully, who is the chief executive of White Ribbon UK. Men do need to think about their own behaviour. They need to be challenging their own attitudes uh, and the assumptions that they have uh, and think about that. And it can be very easy for uh, men to say, well, I'm not violent, this isn't me, this isn't how I behave. Well, I think it's important to check yourself on that and, uh, and spend time asking questions to women that you know. You may be surprised at the answers they give you about how they're living their lives, how we talk about women risk assessing all the time to keep themselves safe. It's worth having those conversations. And then think when you're out with your friends, when you're at work, talking to your colleagues, uh, are the things that make you then reflect and think that that's uncomfortable what's being said here are the sexist jokes being spoken and knowing how to intervene uh, in that is so important so it's about going that extra stage to thinking actually I don't want to be silent about this we need to talk about this so Eleanor how does this all relate to something that we watched this summer Spain's women's football team winning the World Cup yeah, I mean, we can see the picture there, but obviously the win itself was overshadowed by the debate which surrounded Jenny Hermoso after she was kissed by the, the chief of the Spanish Football Association, Luis Rubiales. Now, many women have found themselves in similar situations and have called for, for things like this to be taken much more seriously. But charities have been telling us here at Sky Sports that the incident has proved really important in opening up that debate. It's something that Stephanie Hilborn, who's the CEO of Women in Sport, has been telling us about. It was gutting for the Spanish team to not be able to just be joyful in response to winning the World Cup. Uh, and, but, but it wasn't necessarily fully undermining because what it did was open uh, to, to see, let the world see what those women had been dealing with. And largely they were being still treated like children rather than adults, even though they were adults and they had just won the highest prize of all. And this, this culture of uh, infantilizing women and also misogyny is so deeply rooted in some of the institutions, particularly in football, but some other parts of sport, that that incident has just lifted the lid on it and now we are in a better position to deal with it. So whether it's long-term damaging or actually whether in the longer term this is helpful to our cause is yet to be seen, I think it could be helpful. Yeah, Ellie, such a big issue, so much to digest. White Ribbon clearly wanting us all to engage in the conversation. Yeah, and I think one of the big messages that I've taken away from what they've been telling us here this week is it's about chatting to the women in your life, listening to what they have to say and trying to call out an appropriate language, perhaps when you hear it. But of course, if you've been affected by any of the things which we have mentioned here today, then there is more help and support available at www.sky.com forward slash viewer support. There's
there's also more information on there from Women's Aid or Refuge, which can provide more support should you need it.